All right, we have a space score now to do. And to set up the scoring of the system, we first under, have to understand a little of the geometry of what's going on to decide how we're going to do this scoring system. I basically created a diagram here that I'm going to go through with you and show you step by step how we might score this thing. Let's start out with our um, basic ship, our open ship, and let's say we're going to fire to the right. Uh, the ship has actually a coordinate X and Y. Now that coordinate is located in the upper left hand corner of a, an imaginary rectangle or square around the object. So that circular object you see actually has a square around it, an invisible square. The upper left hand corner is the X and Y coordinate. So that's the actual coordinate of the ship, the upper left hand corner. We can offset that coordinate to get it to the center by taking half of the width and adding it to the X and half of the width and adding it to the Y. Now since I set my ships to 10, half would be 5, so I can just add 5 to each one. If you had variable size ships, you'd have to take a variable in there and divide by 2 to get the number each time to center it on the ship. Our ships are fairly small and this is kind of an oversized diagram so it's not going to make a whole lot of difference but if you notice a difference then you just have to offset it. Now I did offset it on the main ships and you'll see that in when we did the uh, firing and everything it had that but the blast itself and the other ships I'm not going to worry about offsetting it for the scoring routine. I'm going to try and keep this as simple as possible. Alright let's go through a firing scenario. First the photon torpedo, or what it is, shoots out from the ship. A blast center is established at the very end of this trail, and then a blast goes out to a distance of, and we set it to 50. Now, of course, you can make that variable too and put a variable there in your program if you would like. This blast center I'm going to call I blast center X and I blast center Y, uh, I for integers and then I'm naming it so that it's a little bit uh, it documents basically what the variable is and that's the coordinates of that center and I'll be needing those coordinates so I pin those down in the program at the place where they're easiest pinned down and that happens to be the graphics routine I'll show you that in a little bit in the code so now I have the center of my blast here's a ship the other ship now if the ship is positioned there, it's destroyed by the blast because the blast radius takes care of destroying anything that's within its radius. Alright, so um, how can we get the computer to recognize that that ship is in its radius rather than outside of its radius? Obvious to human beings, well we just look at it, it's there. But human beings are different than computers and computers don't do things by looking. They don't have eyes they can't see. So the best way to do this now is use a little mathematics because computers base everything on numbers. It's going to be easy to tell the computer, hey look and see if you are closer to that center than the radius of that big circle. And that's what we're going to do. So the first job is to find out how far that ship is away from the center of the circle, from that blast center. We can do that with a distance formula. Distance formula, Pythagorean's theorem, same difference. Again, that ship, XF and YF, for filled in ship, has its coordinate in the upper left hand corner, like the other ship. But we're not going to worry about that. We could offset that by adding 5 to each one of those as we did the other one. But in this calculation, I'm not going to do that. We'd like to find this distance up to that point. We're going to say if that point's within the circle, we're going to consider we have a kill. We can do that by taking the distance across and the distance up. Now the distance up is simply the difference of the two y coordinates. In other words, the y coordinate of the blast minus the y coordinate of uh, the ship. And the distance across is simply the difference of the two x coordinates. The x coordinate of the blast minus the x coordinate of the ship. Now it makes no difference which order you put these things in because in the distance formula you're going to square that difference which takes the sign off so it doesn't matter. And there's the big old distance formula. 
Now it's time to do a little explaining. Here's our x distance. That's squared. Okay, this means raised to power. This little symbol right here, raise it to power. And the power we're raising it to, to 2. So there we squared that distance. We add it to the squared distance of the y. So basically, like Pythagorean's theorem, it's this squared plus this squared, right? This line plus this line squared. Then we take the square root, and it's way out here, okay? It's part of the math function. So I can get a draw again. It's part of the math function and part of the math library, so we call it in root SQRT. But the problem is this math function right here, where I have the parentheses, here's the parentheses to my math function right there. You see them? Okay. That parentheses right there requires a double, not an integer. And if we take an integer minus an integer and square it, we're going to get an integer. So we have to convert it. So we convert it to double. And that's what this inner set of parentheses is for. OK. This one. You know what? I think I need another set of parentheses out here. No, no. That's right. That minus that squared. And this is the, uh, right, this one right here, this inner parentheses, is the ending to this double right here. In other words, it goes like this. OK. So we've taken and we've converted it to a double, and then we fed it to the square root function, which takes the square root. And of course, taking the square root of that gives us the distance. It gives us this line right here that we're looking at, right there, that line. All right, so that's pretty simple. And now we have the distance. Our next job is comparing it to this thing right here, this blue line, which happens to be a radius which happens to be 50. All right. And we do that in an if statement. If it's less than 50, it's been hit. If, it's, if that distance is less than 50, it's been hit. If that distance is greater than 50, it's a miss. That's simple. It's an if statement. All right, let's look at, go through this one more time for review. This time we're going to go take a ship outside the area. Again, that ship has coordinates, upper left hand corner. We want this distance now. We're going to find it the same way. We're taking the difference of the y's to get that, the difference of the x's to get that, okay, and using Pythagorean's formula again, the same one, exactly the same formula. Now, this little thing up here, remember, has to be a double. That's why I put the little d in front of it. It's got to be a double. In other words, from the square root formula, probably comes a decimal. The only time you don't get it is if you take a perfect square in here, which happens sometimes, but not very often. All right, so we understand that now. That's the theory behind it. Let's go look at some code. Here's our project. I have added a score and something you can't see, another label. I've added two labels here, and it's important you use labels because the keying process gets hung up on text boxes and things of that sort. So it's rather important that you use labels. So I've added a, a simple label here to indicate what it is, score of ship one, and then a label you can't see that I have nothing in right at this time, which is going to be the label for the score. And I probably could have put a zero in it, and that way it would have made it visible. We're interested in the code. And of course, you'll have to uh, put one of those for each one. You'll have to put a label on each side, one for ship one and one for ship two, because you're going to have two in this game. Things I've added to the code. For this one ship, I've added these things. My eye blast center x, my eye blast center y, both are integers. My distance is a double, and my eye score. You'll need a set like this for the other ship as well. 
Coming down, let's see what I've added in this code. Well, you know, first I think I'm going to jump down to the graphics procedure to show you where I, I tacked in the actual iBlast Center X, iBlast Center Y. And that's down in the graphics. And if you'll notice, right here is where I did that in each one. In other words, as soon as the blast is created, okay, I want to store whatever this part right here, notice how that's this part right here, that's the X coordinate, and then whatever this part is over here, notice that's the Y part. You see that? So this goes down to here. Make a nice little arrow. Not so good. And this one to here. Actually to there. Okay, you get the idea. And that's true all the way down here. You see, I just added these two lines right in here on each one of these in the blast area. <clears throat> they have to be in the blast area because it's when you do the blast that you actually know where the blast center is going to be. So that's where you set your blast center. You could do it all up above in the fire section, but it's best to do this in the graphics section because if you do it up above, you have to have a case statement there and you have to have a different difference distance formula for each one. Notice how these are slightly different. So if you look in here, these are slightly different as to where the blast center X and Y is going to be. But once you set it in here, you have no problems with it. So if we go back up now and look and see at the blast area where we're going to do this. Now this is in the case statement in the key down section under our S, okay, right here, right after we set the fire to false, after we're finished, we now come down and we set our score right there. We've got the X and Y set, so we just use it in this formula I gave you for the distance, and then we look and see. If it's less than the blast radius, which happens to be 50, so I just put 50 in this one, if you're going to have a variable blast radius, then you're going to need to put a variable, but I wouldn't advise it. We want to get through this thing as simply as possible. If I do a hit, if it's less than 50, I'm going to add 5 to my score, but if I miss, I'm going to take two off because, you know, he wasted a piece of ammunition. He deserves to get dinged for it. Okay. Then, coming down here, you'll notice at this point right here, I take and display that score in the label before I leave this routine. Now, you'll have to have basically two of these things. You'll actually have to have one for the fire key here and then a whole section like this plus another variable and everything for the fire key down here. And that's how you put a scoring system in. That's one possible.